Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how OpenAI's new O1 model, according to OpenAI themselves, has a risk of helping people create bioweapons. Yeah, it's a bit concerning. So I'm going to be getting into it in today's video. Before I start though, if you're subscribed to this channel, and if you haven't, I suggest you sub click the subscribe button down below. Uh, you may have noticed I haven't posted anything in a while. I was sick. Sorry, but I'm back now, and I'm going to be covering this kind of interesting, kind of concerning thing. So we're going to get right into it. So for background context, if you don't already know, OpenAI released a new model on September 12th called OpenAI 01. It is, a, it is basically just chat GPT 4.0, but it has extensions added onto it that allow it to reason. It allows it to actually do problem solving, and it's rather powerful. It's a pretty dang powerful powerful uh, AI model at the moment. It's quite good, and yeah, it's kind of expensive though. Right now wouldn't be a good time to try it. You can only ask it like 10 questions a week on chat GPT+. Plus. And if you try it with the API, it's also like really pricey. So it's a little bit out of the budget of most people right now, but it does exist. And they've said that it also has a slight risk of allowing people to create bioweapons easier. So alongside the model, they released something called the system card. The system card is basically their findings, their public documentation of what they figured out whilst they were trying to develop this model and some of the risks that could uh, be faced with this model. Um, they have a certain threshold for risks. They evaluate different things. And if it is a either a high or a critical um, score of risk on their own like internal scoring system, they don't release the model. If it's on a medium or a low, they can. So there is this section here called CBRN. That is, long story short, that stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons. So basically what that means is, uh, you know, tools of warfare. And that is ranked at a medium. I'll show you why. So if we go to page 17 of this PDF, which I'll link to the, in a link to in the description down below, if you want to read it yourself on, um, so page 17 on section 4.3, biological threat creation. OpenAI's summary is our evaluations found that O1 Preview and O1 Mini can help experts with the operational planning of reproducing a known biological threat. Basically, it's not going to make a new one per se, but it could help reproducing something that already happened in human history. And even then, however, it's only really good for experts that already have expertise in that specific subject and in that domain. The models don't really enable any non-experts to create these kinds of threats because even then creating such a threat requires a it requires a lot of hands-on skills that you aren't going to be able to have at home. So, you know, random Joe in his shed isn't going to be able to create the next virus. I wouldn't say that. But in theory, if like a specific military really wanted to and they had uh, access to this model in an unfiltered, on uh, unmonitored fashion, in theory, it could be used to uh, accelerate the process of creating uh, various different types of weaponry. Now, alongside this, there's also a California uh, bill that is currently in the legislature at the moment. It's still it's still debated. It's not like passed as far as I'm aware. I'm probably going to cover it in another video, but there is a new measure in California called SB 1047, which would require makers of these AI models to go ahead and take steps to minimize the risk that their models are used to develop weapons or like warfare stuff just because, you know, that's not really something uh, the government would exactly want, and I don't blame them. So there is a whole law thing going on, and this is all happening while other tech companies are racing to basically um, make the next best thing, because OpenAI just released this completely new model that works somewhat differently from all the others. All these other companies are rushing in. All at the same time, the government's kind of like, whoa, 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 buddy, uh, I don't know if we want these models to, you know help people in making weapons, but apparently it is possible. And yeah, no, 
it's interesting. So we're going to see how this stuff goes. Uh, I am definitely curious to see how OpenAI 01 performs in the long run. I think it'll be a pretty good model. It's not something I can test out right now because, again, like I said, it's kind of expensive. You can't really test it out all that much. I don't even know if it's in the LMSYS uh, chatbot arena, so I don't even know if you can test it there. So yeah, it's all kind of iffy right now, but I think in the long run, this might be a pretty good model and I think is actually a quite decent stepping stone towards the future of AI, even considering some of the risks. So yeah, no, I think it's kind of interesting. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I suggest you check out my other videos right over here. Uh, those are videos YouTube thinks you'll like. I suggest you go check them out. Like, comment, subscribe. Take care, you guys. Have a good day. Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. Take care. Have a good day.